Harris, and I currently reside in the Phoenix, Arizona area, and I am the uh, lyricist, vocalist, half duo of um, Ricardo Margadona and Rebecca Riss. Hey there, I'm Ricardo Margadona, I'm from Brazil, and uh, I work with Rebecca since one year ago, more or less, and we are creating all the songs together. I do the instrumental part, and that's my my job. Awesome. And speaking of your songs, we should totally hear one of those. And Rebecca, yes. could you bring us into that, please? Absolutely. I think the very first song that all of your listeners would love to hear, uh, especially first thing in the morning, would be our one of our hit singles, Echoes of Yesterday. Oh, I love that one. Let's do that. Welcome back, Bruce Crew. And here I am with Rebecca and Ricardo. So, that being said, I was wondering, what first got you into music? Well, I know for me, um, I just started singing one day. And I, I guess I must have loved the sound of my own voice at the time. I don't know. But I didn't stop singing. And I, uh, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, one of the very first songs that I truly remember singing is a song by Olivia Newton-John called Xanadu. And it was my mission to, to know every ounce of that song. And I remember that song specifically because it goes really, really, really high at the end. And I was like, yeah, I can sing those notes. And that's, I was five years old. And that's basically how... Uh, Music just made me feel so good. I just wanted to keep repeating that. I just love singing. And that's kind of how I got involved with, with music and, um, of course, attached myself to several different things along the way and to where I am today, so to speak. Awesome. And Ricardo, yourself? Yeah, so I, as far as I remember, since 10 years old, more or less, I started to, you know, to be more interested in, in music because of my parents. Uh, my father had uh, some nice uh, vinyls, and uh, I started to put these vinyls to play, you know, by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, but I did it hidden, you know, because he never allowed me to do that. Yeah. So, and then uh, I started to listen, you know, his records, basically Beatles, Beatles, you know, uh, Rolling Stones, such kind of thing. And uh, after that. Uh, one, one cousin gave me uh, one uh, as a gift one uh, acoustic guitar that I have I still have even today I use it, it to play one of our songs there in the in the in our album and uh, then I started to learn um, I started with some Brazilian songs you know with kind of country and folk Brazilian songs and then I started to have to work, you know, and have my money. And then I started to buy some uh, albums from big bands like Yes, you know, Pink Floyd, some other Brazilian uh, bands like Secos e Molhados. And, uh, you know, um, always uh, rock or progressive rock or classic rock albums. So that's my, if I could summarize my starting in music. Oh, nice. Well, you just answered the next question then. Rebecca, what would you consider your music style? The same or? Um, yeah, definitely rock music has always been something that uh, I always gravitated to, um, something that struck, you know, a, a chord with me. I, of course, enjoy other music, um, but I remember some of, in, in, very similar to what Ricardo explained, you know, putting the records on. I, my brother had an extensive record collection and I would do the same. I would uh, look through his records and choose what I wanted to listen to. I remember specifically always putting on a Styx record. Um, he had uh, a record called Cornerstone, and he had um, another record called uh, The Grand Illusion, and I would listen to those on repeat. And I find it interesting because uh, Dennis DeYoung, who was the lead singer for that group um, and also their keyboardist, I, I didn't realize how much of an influence his style of singing had on me until very recently. Um, I had took out the Sticks album again, maybe three or four months ago and, and listened to it. And listening to his style of singing and listening to the way that I approach my vocals, there is some si similarities there. And of course, the same with Ann Wilson of Heart. That girl's got one powerful kick-ass voice. And I have always strived to ensure that I can deliver things in the same manner that she does. Oh, I believe that you do. You have a beautiful voice. It's so nice. I love to hear it. 
Thank you. Um, also, if you could open up for any band as a starter, who would you want to open up for? Oh, my goodness. Ricardo, you're going to have question. to answer this one. Yes, that's a great question. <laughs> Oh, to open. Uh, to open. I never, yes. never thought about it, but uh, you know, David Gilmore, why not? <laughs> David Gilmore, that's right. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> now that would be a dream. Did you have a different one, Rebecca, or are you all stuck for that one? No, I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, I guess if I had to choose a band to open for, uh, it would be Journey. That would be awesome. Well, I hope that yeah. it happens. That would be so cool. I'd that be like, be hey, cool. that's predicted on my show. <laughs> Maybe they listen to this show. Hey, you never Maybe. know. You never know. Let's not knock it. <laughs> I mean, you have to think about it. The the new lead singer for Journey, he was discovered by um, the keyboardist and guitarist of Journey, which their names escape me at this point, by them watching YouTube videos. I mean, uh, you never yeah, know. That was a cover. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cover. Arnel Pineda was discovered off of them watching YouTube. Where is he? Where is he? from the Philippines. Philippines, yeah. Nice. So what we'll do is is we'll play another one of your songs and then we'll come back in with some more of you guys if you don't mind. Cool. Okay, Ricardo, would you like to call in our next song? Yeah, why not? Okay, what would you like us to have? Sorry. Yeah, so now we are going to listen our first song, Just Like. Yeah. Awesome, let's do that. Back, Bruce Crew, and here I am still with beautiful Rebecca and Ricardo. Okay. And that being said, um, you guys have been in the top 10 in Hometown Underground for quite a while with Delirium. That song is amazing. I usually play it almost all the time on my show. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I think, uh, I think that song absolutely is easily recognizable within the first three seconds of the song. You hear that guitar riff. You, it, and you know what song that is. You know that delirium. And um, I just love that other people sing with it and get excited to hear it. And most importantly, people are contacting your radio station to request it, to hear it more and more. I mean, this past week, we were number five. That's amazing. That is awesome. That is very awesome. I know I don't have any songs in there. So, you know, of course, it's awesome to me. And I love to play it. I love that one. And I love Standing in the Void quite a bit. So you guys were telling me um, in between breaks that you've not met face-to-face yet. No, we have not met face-to-face yet. We communicate often. We communicate via WhatsApp. Um, but no, we haven't met face-to-face. So I look forward to that someday. I think that you guys flow very well for a group of people that have not met face-to-face and to have that kind of quality sound like you've known each other forever so it's just very it's very nice i appreciate that. well i we played that song just like earlier today and um that was the first song that ricardo and i collaborated on and i think one of the best stories for me from that song was we com- we didn't know each other at all knew nothing but we completed that song together in 24 hours wow he sent me the music he sent me the music track. I listened to the music track. And one of the processes that I do when I'm uh, listening to music is um, I work with several different lyricists and that allow me access to their catalog. So I'll start reading lyrics as I'm listening to the music. And when I find a lyric that matches the song, then I can create a melody from that. And of course, um, I don't always use the original lyrics that the lyricist has. And these are the people that allow me to edit and add to their words. So, you know, I, I already have that, that already um, agreement already done. Um, so I just, ha- I have that opportunity to take these words and, and add and edit and adjust. And I sang that song that day and I sent him my vocal track and he did what he needed to do on his end. And we both listened to the song approximately at the same time. And I think we both had, actually, I know we both had the same exact reaction. We're both sitting there with our headphones on, jaw dropped in amazement going, what is this that we're hearing? You know, and um, it was great. You know, the song was done in 24 hours. Yeah, we could realize in the first minutes, you know, that it was special. Very special. I love that. Also, I want to thank you guys for being on the show with me and giving me your time. I know that you guys are very busy. You've got a new song coming out. You want to tell us a little bit about that? 
Absolutely. Yeah. So we uh, had a world premiere of our new song. It, I, well, our world premiere was on May 13th um, and it went to all digital stores on May 14th. The song is called Chaos on the Edge. And uh, again, a funny story, not a funny story, but a true story behind this song is this is the music track where Ricardo and I actually met. You know, he posted the music track on the website where we were both a part of, which is Compose.com. It's a website built for online musical collaboration. And I happened to come across the fact that it, this track said it was looking for vocals and, and listened to the track and I immediately fell in love with it. And I reached out and I said, hey, you know, I, I'd love to provide some vocals on this song. And he let me know. He says, no, 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 I'm, I'm working with a guy and he's going to provide the lyrics and vocals for this song. Um, I've already told him I wanted him to do that. So, you know, uh, maybe we'll work on another song. And we just talked about uh, just like, and that was our first coll- real collaboration. Wow! But a few a few weeks ago, Ricardo must have been listening to this song, and he he dusted off the music track, and he re-recorded the guitars, and we have a, a new drummer, Rafael Vendramini, who is uh, an accomplished uh, drummer from Brazil. I almost said baterista, and I don't even know if that is the right word. You'd have to correct me, Ricardo, if I'm wrong. Um, but oh, anyway. <laughs> Um, but, uh, he, like I said, he recorded everything. He sent me the music track. He goes, now show me what you would have done. I'm curious. And chaos on the edge is the result. Nice. I cannot wait until we get our hands on that. I know that it's probably in the works and I'm probably just not seeing it yet. But as soon as we do, we're going to definitely get that plan because our people are straight loving your stuff. And I know that I love our stuff. Yes, the the initial response to Chaos on the Edge has been huge. Probably the biggest one that we've had since. Wow. Biggest one that we've had yet. I cannot wait. Thank you guys so much for being on the show with me. And I hope that you consider joining me in the future, possibly, maybe. Absolutely. We would love that. All righty. Thank you guys very much. I do appreciate you very, very much. Thank you. And thank you to all the listeners at Bruise Radio. Keep requesting our songs. Keep requesting us so we can keep going up on the chart with Hometown Underground. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patty, and everybody that's supporting us and listening to our songs. Thank you very much.